for a long time we knew there was a cause for Jobert syndrome on chromosome 11, but we did not know what the gene was. A couple of folks in the lab just spent month after month after month testing all the potential genes until they hit upon the jackpot, which was this gene called TMEM216. We'd been working very closely with a group in, in Italy led by Enza Maria Valente, and my lab and her lab have been going back and forth and sharing information on patients with Jobert syndrome. And at the same time, there was a, a collaboration uh, with Colin Johnson and Tania Atabatak in the UK and in France, and they had been working on a different condition called Meckel syndrome. We found we were actually working on the same condition, but different types of genetic changes led to the different diseases. We'd um, ignored it for a long time because it was very poorly annotated, not even really known to be a gene for a long time. And when we went back to it and said, we, we haven't found this gene, it must be there. First, we remove the gene in zebra fish, and then we see whether the zebra fish without this gene, we found that they cause the cellular defect phenotype. And second, the, we took the patient, the skin cell, and we found there is a defect in patient, the skin fibula. They have defect in making the cilia. And third, we used the normal cell and we the, removed the gene in normal cell. And then we found that really they have the defect in making cilia. When we figured out where this protein was, TMEM216, we found it always right next to the base of the cellular antenna. Every cell in the body has little antennas sticking out. They're kind of the way the cell understands where it is by touching and feeling other cells. It's how the cell really interprets those things. We found this protein was right there. And then when this protein was missing, this, this antenna failed to form. So it was really the first clue for us that mutations in this gene are due to a problem with the cellular antenna. When your cellular antennas are broken like this, then there's a certain class of disease that, that a person is susceptible to, and they include disorders of the cerebellum, like Jobert syndrome, kidney failure, extra digits uh, in the hands and the feet, liver fibrosis, and a whole host of other kinds of diseases. We now clump all these diseases together in a new class called ciliopathies, and they're due to defects of the cilia, which is the antenna. So in the last maybe two or three years now, the doctors are starting to recognize that all these diseases we thought were separate are really the same class of diseases. And new causes for human disease always give us insight into the underlying mechanism and allow us to consider potential treatments. So it's that link that's very important. That gene has been causing disease in humans from the earliest time of human history and will continue to cause disease for as long as humans are on this world, you know. So we think making those connections are very important because they're really the links between our DNA and our health. And I think that's you know, one of the most important kinds of contributions you can make in science.